Ayush. And this work was done with a number of people, uh, including Sora, who unfortunately flight couldn't be here, but Salil and Rasul, who are in the back, uh, say hi, and uh, Ad Heart Engineer, who is somewhere here. There we go. Um, and uh, dozens of other people who have given advice and, and help over the, the last year or so. Um, and of course, Xerox Park and PSC for helping to make this work happen. So to introduce what exactly ZK Email and Email Wallet are doing, it's important to look at the context of how people are using this in. Uh, often, data and information and systems that we build on chain don't interoperate well with information off chain because it's hard to verifiably get that data between the two places. And most existing solutions, even ZK solutions, require on a centralized attester making signatures or verifying data. And even if that signature or data is verified in ZK, you ultimately undercut the premise of decentralization by trusting things like MPCs, enclaves, or centralized signers. <clears throat> the hope is that by using proofs of email, you can unlock a slightly new paradigm in which instead of relying on the protocol itself to sign, you can trust the source of the data as the signature. Namely, using the mail server that signs emails, you can verify that data correctly given that data direct provenance from its source. And you can prove and extract arbitrary information via regex or string matching, making that provenance programmable. And so how exactly does this work? Well, it turns out that every email in your inbox and every email you've ever sent since 2017 is signed with an RSA signature. That signature signs the hash of all of your information in the email, as well as the email body. And the public key used to sign that is hosted on the email domain server. So for instance, if you're sending an email from gmail.com, you would imagine that the mail server public key of the RSA key is stored on google.domainkey.gmail.com, which you can easily get by DNS. This is particularly powerful, because if you can verify this RSA signature within a ZK snark, then you can programmably reveal only specific data you want to, thus allowing you to get controllable privacy. So how might you imagine this working? So once you send an email, the email domain server, whatever one it is, will sign that email with an RSA signature. The user can then present that email to a ZK proof that runs client side. That email proof can then be broadcast on chain, and the proof can hide information arbitrarily. So for instance, you can say, I can prove to you this email had an email address which was from gmail.com, but I'm not going to tell you which person at gmail.com. This is particularly powerful for verifying off-chain data. So imagine you want to verify your Twitter username. Well, Twitter sends you a number of emails, including feed updates, password resets, and the important thing at the bottom of each of one is your username. How might you then prove this username on chain? Well, you would first verify the signature that I talked about, which is in the header of the email, all of that data up there, as well as the RSA signature, which is in the raw email. Then you can hash uh, from the middle to the end of the part in which contains your sensitive data. You can also do this on the entire subject. And you can regex match exactly the part that you want to expose, and subsequently ensure that it is structured correctly, and then make only public, say, the username, or the number of followers, if that's what's in the email, or any other piece of information. This is particularly powerful, and there's a number of applications that have been built with our SDKs, including ZKP2P, which allows you to do on-ramps and off-ramps from Venmo to USDC. You prove, let's go. You have a, <laughs> a proof of your Venmo confirmation email, which allows you to show that money was transferred. In terms of the proof of identity, we have the Twitter proof, as well as proofs that you contributed to a GitHub repo, proofs that you are part of an organization, like for instance, you own an at ethereum.org email or something, and uh, anonymous KYC, which allows you to say, I've received, say, a KYC email from Coinbase, um, but I'm not going to tell you which person I am that got KYC'd. And uh, at, you can reuse that KYC on other websites anonymously, such that only Coinbase can de-anonymize de you. Um, or if you don't have nullifiers, then no one can de-anonymize you except the mail server. But the one I'm going to talk about today is email wallet. And so the idea behind this is that sending assets to people off-chain is useful for Ethereum to have broader social impact, where people don't have to understand the concept of seed phrases, wallets, and so on in order to interact with money and assets. And these early experiences need to be as simple as possible, ideally not memorizing a 12-word word seed phrase. And so one idea is that you can aid crypto onboarding and transactions via sending assets directly to email addresses. So for instance, what you can do is you can set up 
a wallet structure, which I'll talk about in the next couple of slides, such that only the owner of that email address can claim and interact with it, as long as a mail server verifies them. And subsequently, if you want to add functionality to such a wallet, say swapping or your own contract, it's a very simple Solidity contract to be able to parse that email in a new way and enable that functionality. And we have a demo up at emailwallet.org, which you can try out. And the high level of how this works is that currently on testnet and soon to be on mainnet, you will send money, say for instance, test tokens in this case, to Sora. You can then have an email which is sent to a relayer with a subject that describes the amount of money you want to send and the recipient. This is the information that you imagine that ZK proof running on the headers is going to extract out and then convert into a transaction. And so what happens is you send this email. In this case, it's going from ZK email verify to ZK email verify 2. The wallet is created, in this case, an account abstraction wallet controlled only by that email address and valid signatures from that email address. And money can be transferred and sent on Etherscan. Now, OK, let's go into a little bit more detail on how one can imagine this working. And this is a bit of a simplification. We've made it a little bit more complex for the v1 in order to have a couple more guarantees, which I'll also talk about later. But this should give you the high-level mental model of what is actually going on when we're sending an email wallet transaction. So in this case, the rectangles are users with email addresses, and the ovals are going to be smart contracts. And so we begin by user 1 sending an email to the relayer, describing they want to send email money to user 2. The relayer will then hide this information so that their email addresses are not on chain. You could imagine a naive implementation would just expose the email addresses and make a create to hash, but that would mean that anyone can look up your email address and know your balance. So in this case, what we do is we hide that email address from being on chain by only making publish a hash of that email address and a salt that the user owns. Subsequently, we expose only the information we want to expose, in this case, the transaction actually occurring in a ZK proof. The account creator verifies this proof, ensures the token mapping matches, the proof verifies, and the mail server key is in fact correct. Subsequently, that proof can be used to unlock funds from someone's account, validate that in fact that salt that we gave for the recipient is available to them via an email to them, and that the account can in fact be validated by them, at which point the money can transfer or the assets or the state information or whatever other information. And so the idea is that if we want this to actually be practical and de as decentralized as possible, then a thoughtful release requires, for instance, a decentralized relayer system. So if you trust a decentralized relayer, the relayer has no power to steal your funds, but they might be able to censor you. And so by making this completely decentralized and allowing anyone to host a relayer and then use PSI to communicate with other relayers such that they can't censor each other, then users can uh, avoid trust on a relayer, either by migrating their relayer if they don't like it anymore, or self-hosting from the beginning. In addition, we have some extensions, so you can easily add a new email wallet call via defining this extension and the information um, in Solidity, exposing it to your users. Um, you could imagine that DKIM keys are a tricky part of this because those need to be transferred on-chain. And one way we ensure that there's no censorship for these DKIM keys is that the private key for that DKIM key must be sent publicly on chain in order to invalidate it. Uh, and finally, and this happens because DKIM keys migrate and rotate every so often for a number of email services. In addition, if you don't trust the on-chain contract, you can self-host your own DKIM key contract, and the email wallet will give you functionality to switch that around. And finally, the privacy on chain. So if your email addresses are unlinked to your balances, then you get kind of a relayer native privacy in which only the relayer can link that information, which can be self-hosted. And in addition, one really interesting thing is that the way in this system is designed, it's forward compatible with UTXO-based models. So you can take an account that's currently on emailwallet.org, build a UTXO-based system such that every single transaction is private, and seamlessly migrate this system to such an entirely private system. Um, we're excited about what people can build with this. So we've open sourced all of our code and SDKs. Um, they're on NPM, and we'll have, uh, if you want to do CIRCOM proofs, as well as JavaScript helpers and so on. We have all of that. If you want to do super fast client-side proofs, we also have a Halo 2 library. Um, and these SDKs are really powerful. People built, for instance, a ZK email knows a safe, which allows you to do 2FA on your Ethereum account with your email address in one weekend. Um, 
And there's a ton of things we can build, and we're really excited to brainstorm with people. For instance, you can prove that you took a flight in your email. You prove that you came from somewhere because you have a tax form. Or you prove you have some credit score because you got an email from Equifax. Or you prove uh, you can bounty whistleblowing. You say, I will pay someone if you can prove you're from at FTX.org and have some information about this specific person exposed in the email. Uh, you can donate to any published research paper because all these authors often have email addresses publicly. Um, you can give donations to GitHub uh, based on whether people have contributed or not. And we're really excited what this can unlock, especially for public goods. Um, we'll have a ton of workshops throughout the week um, for the technical side to help support people in building this. Um, and it's not just technical things that allow this to advance. There's a number of things that require, for instance, careful thought around legality and security. For instance, the ideal way to get DNS keys on chain is to use DNSSEC, but very few websites support DNSSEC. So there's actually space for security lobbying, for instance, to help websites support that to make the system more secure. Um, if you're excited about infrastructure, we have a number of projects there. Um, we've also got a number of bounties for various projects. Um, and here are some links that will hopefully aid your understanding, including our homepage, in which we have links to the SDKs, the docs, all the demos, email wallet, which will allow you to test out the transactions on a testnet right now and on a mainnet soon, and Telegram, which will, in which we'll put all of our updates about where the workshops are, when the workshops are, and uh, new releases and interesting, exciting stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much.